Hello, my name is Moritz Niendorf and I'm a graduate student in the Department of Aerospace Engineering at the University of Michigan. And in this video, I will talk about some of the work I've been doing here as part of my research. But first, I want you to remember the last time you got stuck in traffic while running errands. And I know I have recently. And it happens almost all the time. At home, one plans our day day to be as efficient as possible, but then something unforeseen happens, things change, and what one thought would be a really good idea turns out to be quite inefficient. And that phenomenon is something I study in my research. So what do I do? I use math to look at real world problems, problems like the itinerary planning problem, where one tries to find a best order in which to visit multiple locations or production planning problems, where one tries to find the best way to use a given resource, such as, for example, farmland. Packing problems, where one tries to fit as many items as possible into a suitcase. Or, as an aerospace engineer, we can look at runway scheduling problems, where an airport has a runway and we try to maximize the number of aircraft that can use that runway within a given time frame. And all these problems are optimization problems. That is, problems where the answer is a best way to do things or an optimal plan. And by problem, I really mean a mathematical problem. That is a question that can be stated, analyzed, and potentially be answered using the methods of mathematics. And all the problems I look at have two very specific properties. First, the answers have to be integer numbers. So in the itinerary planning problem, that means you can either go to one location or an other location within one step, but you can never go to half one location and half the other location at the same time. And second, there's a cost associated to a solution. So in the itinerary planning problem, the cost of an itinerary is the time it takes to complete that itinerary. So then the total cost of an itinerary is the travel time for all the roads that are part of that specific itinerary. And for the rest of the video, I will actually focus on this itinerary planning problem. So let's say you have a very busy day ahead of you where you want to visit your two friends, Michael and Maria, you want to go to the post office, pick up a new parking permit at the city hall and do groceries. So when you're at home, you try to find a best way to do all these things. But you also know that there's two construction sites in the city and you're not really sure how much delay they might cause. So based on some assumption, you will find a best way or a best guess in which to order your visits. Let me point out why these types of problems are actually interesting to researchers. Let's say you're not visiting Michael and Maria, so there's a total of four locations. Then the total number of options you have to order those four locations is 24. You can write down those 24 options on a piece of paper and find out what the best way to order those four locations is. In our example, with six locations, there is already a total of 720 different options to order those six locations. You can still write down all these options on a piece of paper, but it might actually take you some time. But then imagine you're a delivery truck driver and in the morning you try to find out the best way to visit your 60 customers for the day. In that case, you don't only have 10 times the number of options you had for six locations, but actually the number of options to order 60 customers is a number with 82 digits. Writing down all these options will take longer than the age of the universe. And that is why these problems are actually hard. So now, coming back to our example, let's say you have decided on a way to visit these locations. Then when you use your GPS to travel from one location to the other and the GPS receives updated traffic information 
and there is a traffic jam somewhere along the way, the GPS might actually pick new roads for you to avoid that traffic jam. However, what your GPS doesn't do is, it does not tell you in which order to visit all the locations. And also, wouldn't it be handy if actually, if the GPS receives new traffic information, it then finds you a new best order in which to visit those locations based on the new traffic situation. Well, the good news is we can actually do that. The bad news is, remember that I said solving these ordering problems is actually hard. So if you run that on a mobile device, every single time new traffic information becomes available, it might actually really drain your battery. So then the question is, is there a way to guarantee that the current solution, the current order we have is the best, even though we have new traffic information. So we don't need to recompute the solution. Or even more general, is there a way to describe all traffic situations for which a given solution, a given order is the best we can possibly do? That is the question I look at in my research. On the left, we have our example for where, let me tell you, the best solution is to actually travel on the roads on the outside of the map. That is the ones where I've highlighted the lane marker in yellow. Then I'm interested to find the set of all travel time changes for which that yellow tour is the best that exists. And that is what I call the stability region associated with that tour. So. My job is exploring the frontiers of these stability regions. That is a little bit like the job of one of the early map makers or explorers. And the stability regions you can think of as islands. Give yourself a sea or an ocean of all possible travel time changes for all possible roads. Then in my work I try to find the islands in that ocean for which when the travel time change is on that island, the tour that we have is the best possible tour. And once we've found these islands, there's actually interesting questions we can ask about them. First, how many of these islands are there? And second, can we say anything about the shape of these islands in general? So how do we actually find these islands or stability regions? It is known in the research community that doing so is actually hard. Remember that one of the constraints or the properties all the problems I look at have is that the answers must be integer numbers. That is, you can either travel to one location or another location, but never to two locations at the same time. So then we actually found a way to reformulate the problem to tolerate those types of answers. And by doing so, finding the stability regions of the best solution becomes easier. So now that we have a method to find these stability regions, what do they actually look like? On the left, again, I have our example where the best tour is the one with the yellow lane markers. And there's construction between location 1 and 2 and between location 1 and 3. Then associated to that best tour, the yellow tour, there is a stability region, one island. And that I have on the right side of the slide, where on the horizontal axis I have travel time changes for the road between location 1 and 2. And on the vertical axis I have travel time changes between location 1 and 3. And a plus 1 on that axis actually means that it takes you one time unit longer than you thought it would to travel on that road. And a minus 1 means that you actually travel one time unit faster than you initially thought you would on that road. And the yellow area on the right is the stability region of that optimal tour on the left with the yellow lane markers with respect to travel time changes on those two roads. And now remember that I said for the GPS example 
Recomputing the solution every time traffic information becomes available might actually drain the battery because solving these problems is hard. Well, once we've found the stability region, we can do the following. If new traffic information becomes available, all we need to do is we need to see whether that traffic information or that delay is on the island that is within the stability region. And if it is, the current solution that we have, the current order, is the best we can possibly find. And only if the new traffic information is outside of the stability region, then we actually need to recompute the solution. And one typical behavior this problem has is the following. Imagine there's a traffic jam on the road between location 1 and 2. Then that will cause some delay. However, using that road is still the best possible thing we can do. And only at some very specific point the delay gets so large that there is actually a new, a better solution. So let's look at this behavior. Again, on the left, I have our best possible solution highlighted by the red thick line. And on the right, I have the stability region associated to that solution with respect to travel time changes on the road between location 1 and 2 and on the road between location 1 and 3. And notice the red dot at 0, 0 on the right. That means that the travel time for these two roads is exactly what we thought it would be. What will happen is the red dot will start to wander across the island along the red line. So the travel time between location 1 and 2 increases while the travel time between location 1 and 3 decreases. And as the red dot crosses the border of the stability region, there will be a jump in the solution on the left side. Also, the thickness of the red line on the left indicates how much better that tour is than any other possible tour. So now let's look at this. As the red dot moves and gets closer to the boundary of the stability region, the thickness of the red line on the left decreases. And once it leaves the stability region, there's a jump and now we have a new, a better solution. And as expected, we've increased the travel time on the road between location 1 and 2. So that road is not part of the best solution anymore. And we've decreased the travel time on the road between location 1 and 3. So that road now actually becomes part of the best solution. So far, I've shown you stability regions for changes in the travel time on two roads. However, we can of course do that for all the roads. And on this slide, I have the stability region for travel time changes on three roads. And it looks like this. Remember that I said once we find stability regions, we can ask questions about them. Well, it turns out that each optimal solution has exactly one stability region. Also, for the types of problems I look at, stability regions always have this shape of kind of a pyramid that you've just seen. So the, the pyramid itself might be different, but they always have the shape of this pyramid. And what I really like about the research I do is the following. I started out by looking at the itinerary planning problem, but it turns out that the results I've just shown you actually apply to the production planning problem packing problems or the runway scheduling problem. And by using the methods I've shown you, we can look at what happens when in the real world things don't go as planned, things change, how that influences the quality of the solutions we have. And we can also use that method to identify bottlenecks in our real world problems. But what I really want you to take away from this video is the following. We can use math to look at real world problems, capture their essence, analyze them, make statements about them, and find potentially better solutions to them that translate back to the real world problem. So by using math, we can improve the way we interact with the real physical world around us.